Whoa, can I help you? I'd like to sell my Simpsons world. This looks like a pretty big Simpsons world. Uh, Homer kind of reminds me of my boss, Rick. <laughs> He's a fat guy that eats a lot of donuts. Dough. I'm here at the pawn shop today to sell my World Springfield Simpsons collection. There are 133 individual pieces, but there's also, I think, 20 or 30 different environments that interact with the characters themselves. The collection the whole time has been stored in containers up in my garage, so it was time to get rid of them. I'm hoping to get $2,000 for the entire collection. You got a lot, a lot of cool stuff here. It's the biggest American family sitcom ever. Homer was kind of the star of it, just this kind of dim-witted, dumb dad who made bad choices, but he was a loving husband, and he took care of his family the best way he knew how. They first appeared in 1987 on The Tracy Allman Show, and before it actually became a television show, Fox picked it up and did a Christmas special. The numbers were good, so they did an actual series out of it, and here we are 30 years later. Right. These guys won tons and tons of awards. Where did you get all this stuff? Uh, I started collecting them about 20 years ago. So how many pieces in total in the collection? Uh, 133 pieces. OK. I see you got some cool stuff here. You got the family in their car. And you know, this is always the opening scene. What do we got here? Uh... Stephen Hawking. Oh, Stephen Hawking, yeah. yeah. Wow. I've never seen a Simpsons collection this detailed with this much stuff. What are you looking to do with all this stuff? I'm looking to sell it. What kind of price are you looking for? Because this is going to take a lot of time for me to move and sell. A lot of labor, a lot of power, a lot of shipping. So I'm looking for 2000 which okay. I think is super fair. Um, a lot of these environments themselves easily sell between 100 and 200 Well, I can't just take your word for it. OK. I have a toy guy right across the street. Cool. So if you have a few minutes to hang around, I can get him over here. Absolutely. And we can come to a price where I think I can still make money. Maybe we'll have a deal. Cool. He should be here in a few minutes. Cool. Thank you. I think anybody who works or, or runs a toy shop is going to come in here and geek out just like I did. So I think they're going to side with me on this. Wow. Can you see me? Oh, there you are. Apparently, you have the entire world of Simpsons there. <laughs> yes, it's a Simpsons world, and you're living in it. Wow. That's impressive, man. I just want to get an idea of what you think everything's worth. You know, it really uh, depends on what exactly you have here. The Simpsons just got a huge fan base. There's tons of collectors for Simpsons stuff. Playmates Toys acquired the licensing of The Simpsons. There's hundreds upon hundreds of figures. There's play sets. And The Simpsons were always known for being a little edgy. And being edgy, they would do things like, you know, Duff Man. Here was this cartoon that, you know, sensationalized beer and drinking in the bar. And, you know, they did the Stephen Hawking. Like, a lot of people were offended that they produced a toy. And so Playmates took a lot of heat for actually producing that toy. So what do you think this collection is worth Retail value. I want to know that before I start to consider what I could pay for it. Well, you know, looking it all over, you, know, you have play sets like in the mainstream play set. This used to be like a $250 play set, right? Now you're looking at it about a $65 play set. Sometimes when stuff is bought as a collectible, these toys don't gain value, and in some right. case, they might lose a little bit of value. Sure. And so for this type of a collection, I would expect your return on this to be around $2,200. Don't! <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, All right, Steve. Man. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Well, it's definitely going to hurt your asking price. Sure. Um, if I'm going to buy this collection, I'm really looking to be at about 700 bucks. Yeah, hey, that's no, that's madness. Um, if you could push this up to a thousand, I could walk out of here with my head high. This is going to take a lot of time to, for me to move and sell. A lot of labor, a lot of power, a lot of shipping. But you're going to have so much fun doing this. Walk down memory lane. I'd have much more fun taking a longer lunch. <laughs> would you do 950? If you do a thousand, this would be awesome. I mean, for 50 bucks. Uh, I think I could probably still make a little money on it. Cool. We got Thanks, a man. I appreciate right. it. Meet me over there, and we'll write it up. Awesome. Thank you very much. So $1,000 is definitely below what I was expecting, so I'm a little disappointed. But in the big picture, I'm actually quite satisfied because I'm going to be using this money to buy an engagement ring for my girlfriend. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, what do you have? I have a Snoopy book from 1958. The new penis book featuring Snoopy. 
by Charles Schultz. And a hand-drawn picture by Charles Schultz. Oh, that's pretty cool. If you're going to learn to swim, Lucy, why don't you begin with the dog pedal? <laughs> then the next caption, you got Snoopy doing the dog paddle right. on the back, just <laughs> coasting along. I guess they're mad Snoopy can just swim like that. <laughs> I'd like to try and sell my Snoopy comic book. Uh, my favorite character is Snoopy. I used to have a Snoopy doll when I was little. My mom would buy me all the outfits to dress him in. Um, I'm hoping today to get about 5000 for it. The least I'll take, probably 1000 So where did you get this? My uncle actually sent it to me when I was about eight. And we've had it packed away. And I came across it. All right. Peanuts is really cool. It was a comic strip. That started in the 1950s? Yeah, with Charlie Brown and Friends. Right. And I know that it evolved into a couple holiday specials. Yeah, Snoopy is an iconic character, and Peanuts was probably the most famous comic strip of all time. I've never seen this particular book, but this looks more like the comic strip. Right. Not a lot of people know Snoopy wasn't even in the first Peanuts comic strip. And when they did finally introduce him, he didn't speak for two years. Oh, Lucy, that's cute. Did you draw that? I didn't draw that, no. I'm hoping that it was Scholes that drew it. Yeah, that would make this book pretty special if it was, huh? Right. I know there's a lot of Schultz stuff out there, and this is iconic, so a lot of this stuff has been faked over time, I'm sure. Do you know how much you want? 5,000. 5,000, that's a lot. I'll give you and five for it right now if you want to sell it. But not 1,000. <laughs> no, 5,000. All right, well, if you don't mind, I got a friend, uh, Rebecca. She's the manager at Bowman Rare Books. And she sees lots of Schultz and lots of Peanuts stuff. So she could tell us all about this book. All right. All right. I hope the book is real. Um, once he mentioned that the signatures are faked a lot, it made me pretty nervous. I've never had the book checked out before, but I'm pretty confident that it's his signature. Hi, Chum. Hey, Rebecca. I got a book for you. So it's Peanuts, but when I think of Peanuts, I think of a little comic strip in the Sunday paper. Right. So uh, let's take a look, shall we? You've got the four panels for each of them. That's the way that Schultz did the comics for 50 years. All right. Comic strips are pretty popular in the 50s when this started. That being said, Peanuts changed everything. It became the hit. Schultz made millions from Peanuts. You know, it's actually in pretty beautiful shape. The paper wrappers, essentially what we call a paperback, they're really, really fragile. And this one looks really nice. Another thing is this red color tends to fade a lot. And this red is actually really bright and beautiful. So it's, it's quite nice. Thank you. You took care of it. Yeah. And then we've got this drawing here. We need to figure out if it's by Schultz. I assume that's what you wanted to right? Do, right? Since she got this when she was eight from an uncle, I'm wondering, did her uncle just draw this picture and sign it? Mm -hmm. Or did Schultz actually draw this picture? That's a good question, because probably about half, or maybe even a little more than half, are fake. Ooh. So you have to be super, super careful when it comes to Schultz. Well, that's what I called you for, so. The thing about Schultz, though, is you can tell his drawings from others, because he was doing this every day for 50 years. Forgers, they're really drawing, trying to be really careful, get it exact. With this, you can see there's some blotting with the pen, and the ink was having a little bit of a hard time coming out there. It's really hard for forgers to recreate. So for that reason, both the drawing and the signature are real. Awesome. Is it worth $5,000, though? Uh, that is the question. <laughs> if it were drawn with Snoopy, it could maybe get up that high. Uh, with Lucy, though, it's actually worth less. I would say you're looking at 3200 to 3500 Awesome. Wow. All right, well, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you so much. The type of person who would buy this book is the type of person who would read the comic strip, which is pretty much anyone who grew up between 1950 and 2000. If Chum did buy this book, I don't think he'd have a problem in the world selling it. It would go like that. All right, so how much do you want to sell it for? Um, what about three? 3,000. Um, that's, that's a lot higher than I want to go. I'd be willing to take a chance right around 1,200. What about 25? I'm really looking 
more down the 1200 area, you know, maybe maybe stretch it out to, to 14. Okay, what about two? I mean, she said it herself, he's really popular. Um, 14 is gonna be where I, it's just where I'm comfortable at. So if you wanna take 14, I can do it for you. All right, we'll take 14. All right, it's a deal. All right, thank you. All right, I'll meet you right over here. All right. I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get as much for it as she said it was worth, but I'm just happy that it all worked out, that it was real. What do we have here? It's Bugs Bunny, obviously. It's celebrating Bugs Bunny's 50th birthday. It was signed by Frizz Freeling, the animator, and Mel Blanc, the voice. Yeah, I don't really know too much about Bugs Bunny. Wait, what do you mean? He did that movie with Michael Jordan. And he did Roger Rabbit. No, that was a different rabbit. You never cease to amaze me. Today I'm here at the pawn shop to sell my signed Bugs Bunny photo. I picked this up from a collector. I don't have any place to really put it up. I know there's not too many that are double signed like that. He's one of the iconic cartoon characters in history. He was always my favorite. I mean, I always kind of looked at Mickey Mouse like he was a wimp, and uh, he couldn't really get Bugs down. He had two different guys always trying to shoot him, people dropping stuff on him. I mean, he was like the first sarcastic cartoon comedian. He did have a little bit of an attitude. Bugs Bunny's been around since the 1940s, and he's been in over 160 cartoons. Not a bad career. You got it from a collector. Do you mind me asking what you paid for it? It was in the 250 area. I mean, it's framed really nicely. I mean, there's no nicks or cuts. It's in really good condition. If you don't mind, I mean, I'd like to have somebody come down and take a look at the signatures, and I can kind of go for a price from there. That's fine. I'm really hoping these signatures are legit. I mean, this piece would look great in the shop. Drew, what's going on, man? Hey, gentlemen, how are you? Bugs Bunny you talked about, right? Yeah. But whenever they have a situation where there's autographs, the guys give me a call because that's something I expertise on. Bugs Bunny came out in 1940, officially. Now, Mel Blanc, he's known as the man of a thousand voices because he did almost all the voices for animation. Frizz Freeling, he was one of the top animators for Warner Brothers mm -hmm. and producer also. Well, these two gentlemen have very interesting signatures. Uh, but we got to take a closer look. OK. All right. Well, when you're examining signatures, you really have to look at all the different details, capitals and lowercase letters. We'll start with Mel Blanc. And this was done with a, a black felt tip pen. Uh, it's a very distinguished way he makes his uh, capital M coming below the baseline. Then he flies into like an epsilon E type of design. Very interesting. Well, let's take a look at uh, Frizz Freeling, see what we have. He tends to write it mostly capital letters. Well, one major thing that uh, we're always going to be looking for is he drops the L way below the baseline. OK. Well, you know what? You take all the evidence together. All the evidence is what I need to see, so this thing's authentic. Absolutely. Good. Sweet. All right. You got two gentlemen who didn't sign their autographs together a lot, and it's a nice combination all in one particular piece. Value-wise, with both these signatures on one piece, that raises a little bit. It's not original art, uh, though it is, you know, nicely done and professionally uh, framed. Both together, probably retail around $500. Sweet. Good. Well, my man, I appreciate it as All always. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. I'm glad I talked to an expert, because I was really thinking the price would be a lot higher. All right, so you heard my man. He said 500 retail, and you paid around 250 for it. Right and I'm willing to let you out of your investment with no gain here. It's about what I'm willing to pay. It's going to be $250. i am thinking I might be able to get $350. If you can come up to $300, I think we could have a deal. Buddy, I'll go $275, but I, I really can't go any higher than that. If I can't make a really a fairly decent markup on it now, that maybe I'll just put it back in my collection and keep it. You know what, man? I'd rather make $50 than no dollars. So, deal. OK. Chum, you want to go write him up? Yeah. Meet you over there. All right. What do we have here? Oh, some cartoon art. Dick Tracy and Little Abner. Yeah, Little Abner. He was um, a guy in Dogpatch, Kentucky, with a bunch of hillbilly relatives that all wanted to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to come into the pawn shop today to sell some cartoon art. I used to work in the art department of the New York Daily News in the 1960s, so I acquired these two pieces. The reason I'm selling them is because I'm moving to Italy and uh, Carpe Diem. So is this the art that actually went in the newspaper? 
Yes, this is original art. It's signed by the artist. This is Al Cap for Lil Abner and Chester Gold for Dick Tracy. I read Lil Abner back when I was a kid. It's got Daisy May uh, hitting on Lil Abner. That's what they did. Right, that's what they did. And she was hot, too. Since the mid-30s, Al Cap produced Lil Abner for over 40 years. It was read daily by millions. It was so popular, several films were made. There was even a Broadway play. Okay, and Dick Tracy. Ricky know about Dick Tracy? A little bit. Comic strip started in like the 30s. Yep. And uh, he had the radio watch, yep. which when I was a kid was really cool. It was always a little bit ahead of time. Right, but his main message to the public was, crime doesn't pay. For close to 80 years now, Dick Tracy has been running after criminals. That's one of the longest running comic strips of all time. How old is this one? Uh, 72, seven. okay, 70, 1972. And that one's 1970. It has yellowed a little bit. Rick, you gotta understand, when this stuff was drawn, the artists didn't use the most high quality paper. Back in the day, once the strips was printed, they threw them out. Now people know better and they hang on to them. So the older strips can be rare. So what do you wanna do? You wanna pawn them or sell them? Sell them. And how much did you want for them? Uh, 3,000 for Little Abner and 1,000 for Dick Tracy. Mm, no. No, no. Crime doesn't pay and neither do I. I would pay you half that. Well, they were original signed. Yeah, and you're in probably the worst art market in 20 years. Mm. Well, I'll make you a deal then. Uh, 25 for this one and five for this one. Um. I'll do 15 for this one and five for this one. There's no point in even negotiating anymore. I mean, that's my top dollar. That's top of the line. It breaks my heart, but deal. All right, let's go do some paperwork. It broke my heart to accept two rather than four. I would have liked to take them to Europe, but uh, I'm gonna put it in a safe place. There you go. And use it to pay about four months of my mortgage in Italy when I retire there. What you got there, young lady? I actually ran across something you might be interested in, just because I've never seen yeah. it before. Yeah, it's Chumley's first cousin. Heck yeah, it's Alvin. Alvin, Simon, Theodore. Do, 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 do. Yep, your first cousin, Chumley. I am coming down to the pawn shop today to try to sell my 1960s Alvin and the Chipmunks marionette. I'm hoping to get between 100 and 125 for it. I just love that Alvin is the troublemaker of all the chipmunks, and that's me. So where'd you get it? My mom had a box of old stuff, and she passed it all down to me to see what I wanted to do with it. Yeah, Alvin's been around since the 60s, and it's still a very popular kid's cartoon. I used to watch it in the early 90s every day before elementary school. It's broke. I know, one of the strings I think is too short to be reattached, it would have to be fixed. The old man's trying to fix it. You want to play with it, don't you? <laughs> oh, shut up, Chumley. I know how much you like these toys from the 60s, boss. Alvin Chipmunks was created back in the late 50s. These little buggers even have a couple of Grammys. Pretty good for some healing sucking rodents. This is before computer games. Kids felt these things was great. It's in good shape, it's complete. Some of the strengths are broke, but that's repairable. Have you guys seen any of these, or? This one here, I don't think we've had one of these before. What do you want to do, you want to sell it? Yep, just wanting to sell it. What are you trying to get out of it, young lady? I was just hoping to get somewhere in the 100 $120 range. No. Japanese tin toys from the 50s, the trains from the 60s, that's the ones that bring the big money. This right here, I'd be a buyer at about $40. God, man, you're breaking my heart. Uh, that's my job. Uh, could you do like 75? I'll push it to 50, but I ain't going no higher than that. About 50 It's the best you can do? That's it. All right, you know what? That's a deal, sounds good to me. Someone you want to go write her up? This marionette is a cool piece. I just hope I can keep it the hell away from Chumley because he'll break it. Let's go take a nap and then get a cheeseburger, Chumley. Yeah!